Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about the osteology of the mandible. The mandible is the largest and strongest bone of the face. It develops from the first pharyngeal arch. It has a horseshoe shaped body and a pair of rami. In anatomical position, body is convex forward. This is convex forward. Upper part of the body is the alveolar part containing the alveoli for the roots of the teeth of the lower jaw. The mandible is also called lower jaw. Each ramus projects upward from the posterior part of the body. Ramus has two processes, the condylar process. This is the condylar process. This is the coronoid process. Okay. So, we got the the mandible here anterior and convex here this is the body this is the alveolar part this is the condylar process this is the coronoid process okay this is the notch mandibular notch here and we got inside if you go there you'll we'll get the mandibular foramen here you we'll get mandibular foramen here is the mandibular foramen and there is a bony process here we call it the the lingula okay lingula we have the mylohyoid line inside we have the mylohyoid line mylohyoid groove is here here is the genial tubercle here not very prominent in this bone this is an artificial bone okay here we have the mental tubercle incisive fossa and on this side we have the the oblique line this is the ramus of the mandible this is the coronal process this is the condylar process this is the phobia here of the condyle here the depressed area is the phobia okay and this is the mental foramen here one Another one is here, mental foramen. We got that. Okay. Now you go to that. Next slide. Here, even better than my presentation. Okay, here you find out that the mental foramen, elbow part, the mental tubercle, and here the central part we have the symphysis menti in the newborn child that become ossified because the Mandible develops from two components, two sides come together. The symphysis menti, that is a fibrous joint that become ossified very soon after one year, around one year. Okay, this is the coronary process, condyloid process. There is the phobia area, depressed area here. And this is the mental spine here, mental supramental spine, inferior mental spine here. Diagnostic process, we have the sublingual fossa submandibular fossa and this is the mylohyoid line here mylohyoid line is the mylohyoid group mylohyoid line okay this is the oblique line outside this is the oblique line we got that this is the oblique line this is the mental foramen okay for the exit of the mental nerve and bassets okay so we got that mental nerve and mental artery for the exit of that. External surface we got symphysis menti, mental protuberance, mental tubercle, mental foramen, oblique line. Oblique line is certainly here is the oblique line here. External surface here. Incisive fossa below the incisive incisor canal, central incisor canal, the depressed area below the central incisor teeth. Okay. We have the incisive fossa mylohyoid line on the inner side of the body of the mandible okay groove for the groove for the sub sublingual fossa just above the mylohyoid line it may not present distinct in all the specimen mental spine with the supramental spine inferior mental spine and mylohyoid groove okay we got that now go to the muscles Muscular adjustment, muscles of mastication, temporalis, 
temporally should be inserted here on the coronary process masseter on the lateral side of the ramus here of the mandible lateral pterygoid around the condyle medial pterygoid on the inner side side of the mandible or along the angle of the mandible this is the angle of the mandible on the inner side we will get the get the attachment of the medial pterygoid other muscle attachment buccinator muscle here posteriorly close to the third molar teeth area or second molar teeth area mentalis mentalis is just here over the mental tubercle the area mental is depressor levi inferior is lower part depressor angle oris okay and we we'll get the these are along the oblique line and platysma the base of the mandible we we'll get the platysma attachment here genioglossus geniohyoid okay those should be attached to the to the spine here to the here is the area to show you okay okay so if you go there here is the mental spine superior mental spine inferior inferior mental spine these are the area for muscular attachment geniohyoid genioglossus muscle okay we got that now the Mylohyoid, mylohyoid along the mylohyoid line, diagastic on the anterior part, on the anterior interset or the diagastic fossa. Superior constrictor near the third molar teeth, okay, the upper part with the superior constrictor muscle. We'll look at the image very soon, okay, we got that. Muscle attachment, these are the muscles of mastication, they are derived from the first pharyngeal arch. All of them are innervated by the mandibular division of the trilingual nerve. We have some muscle here, muscle sufficient expression, innervated by the facial nerve, okay, and also anterior diagnostic muscle, anterior bilobe diagnostic muscle innervated by the mandibular nerve, superior constrictor innervated by the pharyngeal plexus, okay. We got that genioglossus, geniohyoid muscle here is that platysma here. And platysma innervated by the cervical branch of the facial nerve. Here, depressor muscles. Depressor muscles are muscles of facial expression innervated by the facial nerve. Okay. Okay. Here, insertion of the medial pterygoid on the medial side of the mandible near the angle area. This is the mylohyoid line, origin of the mylohyoid muscle, nerve supply, not to the mylohyoid okay here is the superior superior constrictor muscle here just posterior to the to the third molar teeth here okay we got that and the coronary process for the insertion of the temporal is major muscle the the condylar process and then con and, and the phobia of the condylar process for the lateral pterygoid muscle insertion here on the outer side this is the insertion of the masseter muscle the oblique line we have insertion of the we have the origin of the buccinator muscle then depressor anguli oris and depressor anguli inferior is here anteriorly more or less anteriorly mental is just above that with the anteriorly of the mental is that is the origin <coughs> so this is the muscular origin of the mandible here this bone they have not indicated this is the this is the lingula area and this is the mandibular foramen. This is the mylohyoid groove area. The lingula is the attachment of the sphenomandibular ligament. Lingula is the site of attachment of the sphenomandibular ligament. This is the posterior border of the ramus for attachment to the stylomandibular ligament. We will learn it gradually. Okay. So, we have the spine here. We have the spine from the, from the further up from the upper spine origin of the genioglossus lower spine origin of the geniohyoid muscle okay we have the genial spine here okay for upper we'll get the origin of the genioglossus from the lower spine we'll get the geniohyoid okay ligament we have the lateral ligament here 
the fibrous capsule of the temporomandibular joint and this is a stylomandibular ligament this is a spanomandibular ligament attaching to the lingula just just over the uh, around the the mandibular foramen a mandibular foramen contains the inferior alveolar nerve and inferior alveolar vessel this is we are seeing the mandibular foramen here okay here mandibular canal containing blood vessel also a nerve inferior alveolar nerve and inferior inferior alveolar artery so artery is related to the mandible with the maxillary artery inferior alveolar artery Myelohyoid artery, mesoteric artery, facial artery, mantle artery, okay, lingual nerve, nerve related to the mandible, lingual nerve, auricular temporal nerve, mesoteric nerve, inferior alveolar nerve, nerve to the myelohyoid, mantle nerve, cerebral gland, all three cerebral glands are related to the mandible, erotid gland is just on the posterior border of the ramus of the mandible, both inside outside, okay. Submandibular gland is below the mylohyoid line here, the submandibular fossa. Sublingual gland above the mylohyoid line in the sublingual fossa. Here is the sublingual fossa. Submandibular fossa is here. Sublingual fossa is above here. Okay. So these are the relationship of the mandible. Okay. Here, if you look at the relationship, this image I have taken from Google image. Here, this is the area for relationship to, the, to that of the, of the parotid gland. This is the auricular temporal nerve related to the neck of the mandible. And this is the mandibular notch area. Okay. And this is the mandibular notch related to the mesoteric artery, mesoteric nerve. This is the neck of the mandible below the condyle. Okay related to multiple structure we we'll go there again okay and we got the mental spine here superior mental spine or genial spine inferior mental spine or genial spine okay we got the muscular attachment there okay then mesoteric nerve inferior alveolar nerve nerve to the mylohyoid we got that that innervates the mylohyoid muscle okay and this is the inferior alveolar nerve here inferior alveolar artery goes to the mandibular foramen here okay here it has been to the spanomandibular ligament to the lingula here okay and this is the lingual nerve that should be between the mylohyoid muscle and the superior constrictor muscle and closely related to the third molar teeth okay okay we got that and here is the genioglossus this for that is taking here genioglossus attachment here and this is the attachment for the genuohyoid muscle okay so these are the origin of genioglossus and genuohyoid from the superior mental spine origin of genioglossus from inferior mental mental spine with the origin of the genuohyoid muscle and we have the medial pterygoid insertion here temporalis insertion here okay color usually red color for the origin blue color for insertion that has not been followed here okay and this is the area for sublingual gland sublingual fossa and this is the area for submandibular gland and here we will get also the facial artery it is related to this border is related to the facial artery okay ossification greater part ossifies in membrane part ossifying the cartilage into the incisive part corneoid and condyloid process and the upper half of the ramus each half ossifies from one center at the sixth interuterine line in the mesenchymal sheath of Meckel's cartilage and Meckel's cartilage is a derivative of the first pharyngeal arch. At birth, the mandible consists of two hubs connected by symphysis mantine. We have also to know the age changes. At birth, there are two components of the mandible and the angle is obtuse. How much? Around 140. The mental foramen is at the lower level and the mandibular canal runs near the lower border. In adults, the mental foramen opens between the upper and lower border. 
and the mandibular canal runs parallel with the mylohyoid line. In the old days, mental foramen and the mandibular canal are close to the alveolar border. Okay, because people lose the teeth as well as lose the alveolar process on the upper part of the mandible. Okay, so this is the age changes at part this two component connected by symphysis menti that will be fused by one ear. Adulthood in between the upper border, lower border of the body of the mandible, this is the mental foramen. Old days, okay, the alveolar process is gone and the mental foramen is very much up. Our mandible may undergo fracture, common site of fracture near the incisive teeth area, okay. Incisive teeth area, we have the side very, very much prolonged root that may cause fra common site of fracture. Another side of fracture is the angle of the mandible. We have prognathism, abnormal protrusion of the mandible outward that is seen in sight of in, in case of injury to the mandible or in case of acromegaly, excessive growth hormone after puberty. Macrognathia, unusual smallness of the mandible that is found in case of some type of fast pharyngeal arch, uh, congenital defect like Pierre Rubin syndrome. syndrome will get the micrognathia or also in treacher collins syndrome will get micrognathia small man mandible and that's all about the osteology of the mandible if you have any question please feel free to ask me please share the information with your friends please support my channel please subscribe me and have a nice and wonderful day bye now